Today, on Morristown's Roundtable, we have on the right, Dante Bucci, on the left, Brian Pounzius, on the outskirts, Brett Barbin. Our topics today are the government shutdown or slowdown and... The difference with green eggs and ham is when Americans tried it, they discovered they did not like green eggs and ham and they did... And the senatorial election. <laughs> Mr. Bucci. Yes. Do you think either party had fault with the government's shutdown? I'm a carry in a box with a fox in a house or with a mouse. Well, I thought both parties were at fault for the government shutdown. I believed um, Republican senators fulfilled their campaign promises to help defund Obamacare to their last breath. Ted Cruz. Incorrect. Brian, what's your take on it? Well, I think it comes down to what the American people think, and 79% of the American people blame it on the Republicans. I refute those statistics. Um, you have to How can you refute statistics? <laughs> it's very easy to. You want to know why? Look who's being surveyed in these polls, okay? If we're talking about people who are actually going to vote, likely voters, it's about, it's about a split. It's about anywhere between uh, 45 to 50 percent, and they waffle between blame for the Republicans and the Democrats. If we're talking about the people who know absolutely nothing, get their news from the mainstream media, the NBCs, the MSNBCs, CBS, they're just going to blame the Republicans, okay? So, Mr. Bucci, where should people be getting their news? They should be getting... Daily Beast? <laughs> no, not the get... That's an interesting question. They should be... I'm personally the kind of person that watches all the news stations because I'm a pretty boring guy. I watch all the news stations and I formulate my opinion based on what they're saying. I read different columnists from the right and the left and then I analyze them. Mr. Barbin, yes. <clears throat> since we can't get anywhere with the left and the right, let's go to the outskirts. What do you think the ultimate outcome of this government shutdown was for the political parties and for the country as a whole? Well, the Republicans would like to say that now some of them are that they split into factions that the uh, the old Republican Party is now looking weak because they've given up. They've given up the original fight that they wanted to put forth, that the Tea Party was originally fighting for. But actually, from my standpoint, as I can look at it, the Republican Party comes away from this altogether as a loss. They went into this thing, it was, it was ridiculous, uh, the, the type of thing, they hold the government hostage in order to put forth, uh, put forth their agenda. The, the whole thing just makes them look bad and they come away from this looking quite uh, out of touch from the American people. Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with his world. Issue two, the senatorial election. So last night, uh, Mayor Booker won the, uh, the Senate seat that was formerly uh, Lautenberg's. And we now have two Democrats yet again in the, uh, the Senate. Uh, I would like to congratulate Mayor Booker becoming a United States Senator. I don't think this was a shock to anybody. I did think uh, Mayor Lautenberg, not, excuse me, not Mayor Lautenberg, Mayor Lonigan, uh put forth a very uh, good campaign. He was losing by as much as 25 points in June and July, and he narrowed that to 9 and 10. Can I pick up on that with, uh, uh, with Brian? So, <clears throat> people who were looking at this race assumed that uh, Mr. Uh, Booker would win very easily. And yet, as uh, Mr. Bucci told us, he lost significant um, poll numbers as we got closer to the election. What, how do you account for that? Is it that he's actually a weaker candidate than people think when people got to know him, or is that just what happens in politics? Well, a lot of the actual numbers were lack of um, people showing up, because people thought he was going to win, and a lot of people just didn't go to the polls. Um, but the poll numbers in recent weeks, he gained uh, uh, not a lot of the uh, Lonigan gained uh, a lot of poll numbers in the coming weeks. He brought Sarah Palin in. Uh, Sarah Palin gave him an endorsement, and of course Obama gave a video endorsement to Cory Booker. If I could chime in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd actually like to say that the reason Cory Booker, the, nar the race narrowed, was because his celebrity image was wearing off. I think Cory Booker mostly survived upon what he had done as, an, as a Newark mayor, the outstanding feats that he had, like saving people from burning buildings and such things, that it made him look like uh, basically like a Superman. 
and he, he seemed unstoppable in the beginning, but as people uh, became wary and it turned out Lonigan wasn't such a bad guy, he, like, uh, he fired his campaign manager after making harsh statements towards Cory Booker, uh, they, they really warmed up to either candidate and it actually seemed that uh, Lonigan might have been the better choice over Booker because Booker didn't have that much of a track record. Well, I would like to thank our panelists this week and I would uh, like to tell our audience that there are more panelist seats to be had if you come out to PAC. Any final words, Dante? I thoroughly enjoyed this. Thank you very much. It was enjoyable. And good night.